Hey guys, and welcome back for another spontaneous Attack on Titan hairstyle video. Today we're going to be recreating this Levi Ackerman edgy undercut hairstyle on my mannequin head Dylan. And as you can see, Dylan had very different hair compared to what you see here on the table uh, before making this video. And this video is pretty much just going to illustrate his complete transformation from colour to cut to styling and beyond, okay? So buckle in, and if you do like what you see here today, please don't forget to smash that love button because it really helps me grow on this platform and continue creating awesome hair content like this. Now, before we talk any hair at all though, can we just address what the hell happened in part one, season four's finale, okay? With Zeke and Levi. I'm just very confused. Like, who the hell was that random titan that emerged from the bushes and just crammed Zeke into its stomach? Firstly, that's not how titans eat people. And secondly, surely it couldn't have been Zeke controlling a titan with his consciousness because he was literally blown to pieces by that thunder spear and he didn't even know if he was alive or not. So I was really confused. And after watching the episode initially, I thought perhaps Levi had consumed some of the wine with Zeke's spinal fluid in it while we weren't looking, of course. And then what I thought Levi was planning to do was to just push Zeke to the point of transforming so the Thunder Sphere would, you know, severely damage Zeke, which it did, but also transform Levi into a Titan so then he could then consume Zeke. Because think about it, there was literally no one else around. So that Titan must have been Captain Levi. The only thing that doesn't make sense is the way the Titan ate him. Like, I just, I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comment section below because I'm keen to hear other points of view on this and I'm dying for part two of season four to come out and I'm refusing to read the manga. I don't want to spoil it for myself. I've met you guys halfway and I'm now watching sub. I actually don't think I can go back to watching it in English now. I like watching it in sub, so <sighs> seasoned professional. No, but really, I'm... I'm quite excited that they're bringing out a part two of it as well because I just wasn't ready for it to be over. Okay, now that I have that off my chest, let's talk about this Levi Ackerman haircut, shall we? So the Levi hairstyle tutorial was highly requested in the comment section of one of my previous Attack on Titan hairstyle videos. So most of you will probably know the one where I did Aaron Yeager's new season four Freedom Man Bun hairstyle. Uh, and after many weeks of procrastinating, I finally got my shit together and here we are, we're doing it. The Levi Ackerman haircut. I also have to admit, to put this video together today, there was no way in hell I was gonna be able to do it on my own because upon filming this, or prior to filming this, I had no experience cutting hair whatsoever. I mean, I've done my hairstyling certification, which covers like professional styling techniques, but let me tell you, cutting hair is a whole different story and I'm so grateful to my friend Matt, who's a fully qualified hairdresser by the way, was willing to come over and help me with the cutting component of this video to help bring this awesome Levi Ackerman hairstyle to life. So yeah, very big shout out to Matt. And if you wanna go and check him out on his Instagram or his other social medias uh, after watching, uh, you'll be able to find all the links to those in the description box of this post, okay? Also, just a little side note, you'll see a few other Levi Ackerman haircut tutorials rolling around on the internet uh, that focus on adding that PC element to the hair by hacking at it with a razor. Yes, this method really does help in creating that really pointed icicle look that Levi has. Has, but in real life it's not always the most practical haircut because when you hack those ends away you can't get them back okay so if you suddenly decide that you want your hair to look a little bit fuller or be a little bit more versatile with styles you're gonna be up shit creek without a paddle because everyone knows that you can't add hair back on once it's been taken off okay simples I could have gone the full way and hacked those pieces off in you know this rendition of Levi Ackerman's hairstyle today However, I really did want to keep things a little bit more realistic for any of you out there who are actually, you know, really considering getting this style. And what I'm going to show you in the styling component of this video uh, is how to get those PC Levi looks using hair products instead of hacking them off with a razor. So you can have that versatility, all right? I just wanted to keep it a little bit more realistic. I think getting the hairstyle exact to the character is great, but when you're working with um, like real hairstyles, just things translate a little bit differently. Before we get into the styling, we've got to get into the cutting. So without further ado, let's stop chatting so much and get into this bloody hairstyle because it looks great. I love it. Firstly, before we even get the scissors or clippers out, we had to address the color of Dylan's hair first. As you can see here, it's brown. And if we want to look like Levi, well, you gotta make it black. To do this, I just used a Schwarzkopf box dye in blue black, and I got that from the supermarket and it turned out a treat. I was actually so surprised at how even I got the color. So after coloring, it was time to get on with the cutting. This is where Matt came in 
And first up, we had to section out where exactly we were going to put the undercut. Levi's undercut is considerably lower on the head compared to the generic standard disconnected undercut that we see on so many guys. So we came in and made our section just above the temples and then had it dip down slightly in the back um, just to cover his occipital bone. If you have no idea what your occipital bone is, uh, it's the bone that sits at the back of your skull where the head begins to curve. Welcome to Bone Structures 101. Bone, bone Structures, structures 101. 101. Once you think you have the undercut section spot on, it's time to make some irreversible changes and shave all that hair around the bottom off. The tricky thing with Captain Levi's undercut is because he's a cartoon character, it's hard to actually distinguish how short his undercut actually is. I mean, it could definitely be a zero, but it could also be a one or a two or even a three, you know? So if you actually end up going to the hairdresser to get this style done, predetermine that before you go and sit down in the chair, okay? And then it'll make it better for everyone. The hairdresser, yourself, and yeah. Just remember, you can't bring any hair back once it's gone, so it's safer to take less off in the beginning and just adjust it as you go. Because the mannequin hair is artificially stitched, the threading of the hairs can look, you know, a little bit funny, especially when they're shaven to a zero. So for this cut on Dylan, we decided to shave the undercut to a three so his scalp wasn't mega exposed uh, and it still looked somewhat decent. After putting in our undercut, the real cutting began. So to break down this haircut, we started at the back and we had to distinguish what we call the baseline. So the baseline is pretty much a point that helps us establish where the lowest part of the hairstyle is going to fall once we're done. And it also acts as a guide to help us keep the rest of the haircut looking symmetrical and even right the way through. For this cut, we made the baseline about two inches lower than where we made our undercut section. In simple terms, our baseline fell about two inches below the occipital bone. And the occipital bone is what? That's right, the curvy bit at the back of your head. Bone, bone structures, structures 101. 101. After establishing the baseline, we needed to graduate the hair from the baseline up to the occipital bone. Graduating the hair allows us to follow the natural shape of the head and gives us that nice curvy look at the bottom of the hair by using the baseline as a guide. Uh, once we've graduated the hair from the baseline to the occipital bone, uh, we had to establish a new baseline that sat around the ear. This new baseline became the guide for our fringe. Let me tell you, cutting the fringe around the front was probably the easiest part of this whole operation because there was no graduation needed. <laughs> it was It's actually a very tricky thing to learn how to graduate hair and when you're a left-hander like me yeah it's a whole new ball game honestly once we were happy with the cut in the front and the back we did a once over on all the ends with the thinning shears just to add a little bit of that wispy Levi texture and going back to what I said earlier in this video we didn't want to go too crazy on the thinning as I wanted to keep this style a little more realistic and versatile and had we have gone in you know with the razor and did the dripping icicle ends like all the other tutorials that are online style would have become you know very one note which is what I wanted to avoid so after we finished with the thinning and we were happy with the cut it was time to kiss Matt goodbye uh, and get on to the styling Step one with styling was to get the spray bottle out and get Dylan's hair damp before adding all my pre-stylers. For pre-styling today, I'll be using a few things. First up, I'll be using the Davro Straightening Balm. This stuff is amazing when blow drying or straightening hair. It just leaves a really nice smooth finish on the hair and it's one of my favorite products when I'm working with heat. Then after adding the straightening balm, I'm gonna absolutely saturate the hair in some Colorwell Dream Coat. Uh, this stuff's great for adding shine and just that extra sparkle and softness. It's really, really beautiful, particularly with blow drying. And the final pre-styling step, of course, is to add some heat protectant because I will be doing a bit of heat styling a little bit later to perfect this look. Just a side note as well, if you don't have any of the straightening balms or shine products or pre-styling things that I'm using here, they are not an absolute necessity, okay? I'm just using them because I'm a perfectionist and I like to get the best result I can. The only thing I would say that is mandatory out of all of these is the heat protector because, you know, if you don't use any, you risk damaging your hair, which is never a good risk to take, let's be real. Moving on, after adding my pre-stylers, I then grabbed my wide tooth comb and my hair dryer with the concentrator nozzle, it's a very important part, and I started blow drying Dylan's hair as flat as I could in a downward motion until his hair was completely dry. Note, whilst I was blow drying, I took into account where I wanted the parting of his hairstyle to be. For Levi, it sits a little bit off to the right or the left, whichever side you wanna go with. So I made sure I was working that into the process, so by the time the hair was dry, uh, the part was set 
in place. So after the hair was completely dry, I decided to grab my straightener and work it through the graduated hair that we'd just cut into the back. And what that did was really help accentuate that curvy shape I was talking about before. And it got the hair sitting a lot flatter on the head in preparation of finishing up the style. Once I had the hair looking shapely, I used a little bit of hair oil for extra smoothness. I use this one by Behave. It's got jojoba oil, it's got argan oil, and it's got a few other things. It's really good for defrizzing and smoothing over. It's a really nice finishing product in my opinion. Uh, and then after I did that, I grabbed the Blue Man Monarch Matte Paste. Now remember in the beginning of the video, I said that I'd show you how to achieve that real PC Levi look without needing to hack half your hair away? Well, this product is the secret ingredient that makes all of that happen. It's lightweight, matte finish, it has great hold, and most of all, it's easy to apply. Those are four things that a guy really needs when it comes to a hair product. We don't like fuss. And the thing that I love most about this product is it not only groups the hairs together really, really well, but the texture and dimension that it gives to the hair, it can transform your look from something really plain and standard to something really edgy and unique, which is exactly what we're seeing as I'm applying the product to Dylan's hair right here. It's giving it that rugged, beautiful PC Levi look. And like I said before, we haven't taken those sections out. So you can achieve it without hacking your hair up. The Monarch Matte Paste as well is, or something like it at least, is probably another thing that I would say is a mandatory product to make this hairstyle work. Just in my opinion, everything else is a bonus. And voila, this is how the style came out in the end. It's edgy, it's PC, it looks like Levi, uh, and it's certainly a big transformation for good old Dylan's hair, don't you think? Compared to the beginning, let's have a look at those before and afters. Wowee, mate, look at you. And that, my friends, is how you transform into Levi Ackman. There was actually so much involved with this process, like I'm not even kidding you. Uh, it looked very simple <laughs> as I was just doing those speed throughs and the, the, the voiceover and stuff. But when it comes to hair cutting, dude, you need to respect your hairdresser because they are freaking talented, okay? Until you get a pair of scissors in your hands and you have a go at it yourself, it is a whole nother ball game. So respect to Matt. Thanks, big shout out to Matt actually. Thank you so much for coming and helping me with this. We do have two other uh, haircuts in the pipeline. I've got Mikasa and Annie lined up as well. Make sure you stay tuned for that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna upload them here on this channel or on another channel. Uh, I do like to keep things here more men focused, but we'll see. Nonetheless though, I hope you found this video very useful and I can't wait to hear what you guys thought about it in the comment section. Also, as we're all anticipating the release of Attack on Titan season four part two, I wanna hear some of your theories in the comments of what you think happened with that whole Levi and Zeke scenario. And if you've read the manga, I don't wanna hear from you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to watch. If you wanna keep up with me on a regular basis, don't forget to follow me on all my social media accounts so you don't miss any of my updates. And until next time, goodbye.